first of all, uh, when people ask you what's doodling, well, basically it is drawing, but it's random drawing. It's like you draw uh, as you're talking to someone on the phone and you have a pen and paper with you and you're just drawing and you're sketching and, you know, and stuff like that. So that's doodling. So you, you really don't have to be an artist to be a doodler. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's basically keeping your hands busy, keeping your mind busy while you're doing something else. Uh, you're not really focusing on the drawing itself, uh, but if you happen to be an artist, then the doodling, even your doodling will, will, look, will look pretty, will look nice. And so, uh, the first question I want to ask you all is, uh, why doodling? All right, and if you, if you want to answer, I can see your answers. Uh, so if you want to answer, you go ahead. So why doodling? And I came up with a few pointers <clears throat> as to why doodling can be quite important, can be interesting. First one, uh, because it's relaxing, it is uh, it enhances your creativity. Uh, you can discover solutions uh, to some of your problems sometimes. Uh, and then it also helps you to remove uh, mental clutter. And it also helps you in, uh, in the fluidity in your thinking because uh, sometimes we have this rigid way of looking at things, uh, rigid way of thinking. And so uh, it helps you to become more fluid in the way you think about things, which is connected to creativity anyway. So it's relaxing, it en enhances your creativity, you discover solutions, you remove mental clutter, and there is fluidity in your thinking, right? So that is why people doodle. And I, I strongly encourage for anyone, even though you're not an artist, uh, to start doodling, especially now because we, have, uh, we seem to have a lot of time in our hands and uh, you'll never know what you may discover. <clears throat> now, the next thing is, um, what's, the, what's the criteria for doodling, all right? But quite simple, I have got five points here. One is, there is no right and there is no wrong in the way you doodle. I mean, whatever you draw, even if a dog looks like a cat, it's okay. And if a cat looks like a dog, it's fine, right? And uh, think simple, uh, try to keep your thinking as simple as possible. There should be a lot of uh, effortlessness in the way you doodle. Uh, don't put too much effort and uh, don't think too much about it. Uh, enjoy the moment as you're drawing, enjoy it. Don't, don't, don't struggle with it. Uh, don't always have an eraser and rub it off and then try to adjust it again. Don't worry about it. And uh, don't analyze the drawing as you're doodling. Don't analyze it. Analyze uh, the, if you want to analyze it, you can analyze it in the end. Look at the whole thing. Look at the big picture as to what you have done. And then you want to analyze, you can analyze it. <clears throat> All right. So that's uh, uh, number three. Now, <clears throat> Since if you're on board now, this is your first class. And so this is the syllabus that you're gonna be covering. Okay, as your first class. First one is uh, scribble. Uh, we will do scribbling. And then what we will do is we'll do unscribbling. And then number three, we'll do shapes. And then we will do social distancing because I'm trying to use the terminologies that we're using today. And then number five is social undistancing. And then we have time, we'll go to number six uh, that talks about stay home, okay? So I have a module that you're going to be using and these are the six areas that we'll be covering. Scribble, unscribble, shapes, social distancing, social undistancing, and stay home, all right? <clears throat> okay, are you all with me so far? If you wanna answer, you can. Are you all with me? <laughs> Kavita, why repeat, repeat? Uh, yes, uh, Kavita, your pig drawing is definitely considered a doodle, for sure. Yeah, and you can use creative ways of drawing the pig in many different uh, postures and different expressions and so on. Okay. Hi, Hi Kaleda, you're on board as well. Good to have you. All right, so uh, you guys have your paper and pen with you and your pencil, okay, cool. If all that is there, 
uh, let's begin. Uh, we will do the scribble first. Okay, the scribble first. So it's quite simple. What you're going to do is take your pen or pencil. You have your A4 paper with you. And then what you're going to do is blank sheet of paper. I want you to don't hold the pen too tightly in your hands. Okay, keep it nice and soft and you know flexible. And then uh, when I say start, you start doodling. When I say stop, you stop. All right, here we go. Uh, sorry, you start scribbling, not doodling. You start scribbling. <clears throat> you don't say scribble, right? Scribble. Okay, one, two, start. Okay, stop. Okay, so this is this is my scribble. Cool. Okay. Unfortunately, I cannot see your scribble. Okay, so what you do is, you can turn the scribble around any which way you want to. You can turn it this way, or you can turn it this way, or you can turn it this way. And what you do is, <clears throat> try to look at the picture as much as you can, and see whether an image uh, emerges out of the scribble. This is the first thing about um, being a doodler. A doodler is able to find a meaning even in the most uh, random of lines. Okay, so let's look at it and uh, I will see what I can find from my scribble and see what you can find in your scribble. All right, here we go. Now what I'll do is once my picture is done, uh, I can then show you what I have done. And uh, then you can also see what you have done. You can show it to your family members and ask them whether the scribble is making any sense or not after your thing, okay? And here we go. Okay, almost got something here. <clears throat> this is your ability to see something out of nothing, you know, and I think um, to have this ability even, especially at this time, and I think it's going to be very useful, yeah? And so this is what I got from my scribble. <clears throat> Can you see it? Okay, cool. Okay, so you can even look at it this way. And you can look at it this way. Oh, you can even look at it this way, I think. Yeah, no, not really. Yeah, it's this way. Okay, and so, Shall we try another one? Okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's. Okay. You want to try another one? Let's think about. Hi, Penny. How are you? Thanks for being on board. Okay, we just started off with the first module, which is scribbling. So let's try another one. Okay. Uh, can we start now? Uh, maybe you can answer or should I wait a little longer for you to unscribble? So the first one is scribble and then what you do is when you find the picture in your scribble that's called unscribbling okay that is called unscribbling so the first thing you did was you scribbled right and then you unscribble Okay, and that's the first module that I want you all to learn. How to find a meaning, some image out of nothing, out of a scribble. Okay, so let's try it one more time. 
Can someone answer? Are we good to go? Can we go to the next scribbling? Can we go to the next scribbling? Anyone? Okay. Okay, I'm going to try scribbling one more time. All right, here we go. Start. Stop. Okay, so this is, this is my next scribble. You can turn it around any which way you want to turn it around. Okay, you can turn it this way if you like. <laughs> and you can turn it this way if you like, okay? So, what you're gonna do now is, you can see with, whether, whether I can see a picture in the scribble, okay? All right, here we go. And, and, and the, de the end picture doesn't really have to make much sense. You know, but if you want to make some sense of it as to what the person is doing or whether it's a flower or whether it's a, it's a, a duck or whether it's a house, you know, but it doesn't have to make that much sense. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, I'm trying to use every line there possible so that it will, no line is wasted, you know, no line is wasted. And so, yeah, so this is what I came up with from the scribble. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, this is some of the other unscribbled scribble that I did, which I got, okay. Uh, there is another one here. This is from the first class. This is from the first class. Unscribbling the scribble, okay. So it's now 6.15. We have spent about 10 minutes or 15 minutes on the scribble and unscribbling. Uh, what we'll do is let's move on to the next uh, module, which is uh, shapes. Now, before we draw shapes, I'd like you all to see normally a lot of people, what they do is when they sketch, uh, they like to draw lines, little jerky, you know, like they will draw, let's say a straight a curved line, they will draw like, like jerky, you know, like they will jerky and then they will pause and all that. What I want you to do is, I want you to draw lines with one stroke, you know, right? And so, like for instance, if you, draw, if you wanna draw a circle, for instance, people will draw the circle this way, okay? And that's not good because then it's, the line is not smooth. I want you to, with one stroke, just draw a circle like this, okay? So when it comes to shapes, this is what we will do, okay? I want you to draw as many shapes as you can. This is my, from my previous class. Draw as many shapes as you can and all kinds of weird shapes. Even a star doesn't have to look like a star. It can be curved this way any shapes you like, but I want you to fill up the entire paper, okay? All right, so but all smooth lines. Can you see it's not jerky, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not broken, it's one smooth line, all right? And so here we go. I'm gonna give you about three minutes for this one. Just draw as many shapes as you can on your page, okay? Are we set to go? Okay, let's do that now, guys. <clears throat> let's
draw as many shapes as you can different shapes it can be curvy lines it can be straight lines it can be bent blocks rectangles stars uh, spots dots uh, moon just carry on and don't stop uh, just, just don't don't overthink it and just let it flow draw as many shapes as you like just let the hands do its magic and uh, it doesn't have to be a complete drawing just random shapes on a piece of paper okay just carry on doing as many shapes on that piece of paper <clears throat> I told you it can be even curvy lines, it can be wavies, it can be heart signs, it can be diamonds, it can be hexagons. Just carry on filling it up. We are filling up the page with all kinds of shapes. All right, so this is what I got. Okay, so it's just what 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 we are really doing is one is we are trying to um, in that three minutes to come up with as many shapes as we can from your head to the to the paper, and uh, so you break out of uh, a certain way of thinking. And then the other one is because we, when you when you stop, then you are hesitating, you're reluctant. Uh, when you don't stop, uh, you, you're breaking this mind's barrier of, you know, thinking too much about something. So you just move on to the next shape, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're moving on, you're moving on, you're moving on. So that's the whole idea of um, not hesitating. You're just carrying on in a smooth flow of just drawing shapes, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is, we're going to take this drawing of the shapes to another level of thinking where we are going to do it one more time. We're going to do it one more time, but this time the shapes are going to be a little bit wild. Okay. It doesn't have to be that perfect rectangle. It doesn't have to be just, just explode into the page. Some really weird wild looking shapes. Okay. And have fun with it. Again, don't hesitate. Just flow with it, and uh, whatever comes, let it let it flow on the paper. Okay, are we ready? Okay, let's try it one more time. <clears throat> okay, here we go. One, two, go. Okay, have you gotten the shapes? All right. So this is what I got. Okay. All right. So here is what we we got the shapes out of the way and uh, these are some of my wild uh, shapes from the previous class which i drew all right okay okay so so now the hands are a little bit fluid okay your mind is a little bit fluid with shapes and so on and so forth and that's your basic that's your fundamental so what we'll do is now, we'll go to the fourth uh, module, which is social distancing, okay? Which is social distancing. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to draw the shapes. We're gonna draw those shapes on a piece of paper, like, like this, but none of the shapes should touch the other shape. They all should be on their own, okay? I will show you a sample. I'll show you a sample. If you notice, all these shapes over here, they are not touching each other. They are all on their own. Can you see? Okay. So I call this social distancing. All right. And so it, it, it's an interesting design. You can actually even print it and make uh, material or fabric, and uh, you can you can you can make shirts and dresses out of them. Okay. And so. 
uh, again, when you draw these out, they should not touch each other and there has to be a fluidity. Don't hesitate, don't jerk, don't stop, don't, no cracks, no you know, broken lines and so on. Just, just flow with it, okay? And so here we go. <clears throat> okay, and so let's start. Social distancing, no shape should touch the other shape. Okay, this one I'll give you five minutes to complete this. Okay, and these are all basics in drawing. Uh, before we go into the more advanced modules, which will happen tomorrow uh, at the same time, I will send you the link later on. Okay, and so draw the shapes. And this kind of drawing, this kind of uh, drawing shapes uh, and keeping to the rules, which is they shouldn't touch each other. All this helps later on when you go into figure drawing, uh, landscape, uh, faces, people, and uh, all the other stuff. Okay, but this one has to be done first. Uh, for some, it can be, why so boring, huh? You know, just drawing shapes, drawing shapes, drawing shapes, but these are, unfortunately or fortunately, these are the basics. You need to, you need to know um, the fluidity and also the different kinds of shapes that there is. Okay, and sometimes we only draw shapes which is which is most comfortable for us, which is squares, rectangles, triangles, stars, and so on. But I want you to think beyond that and draw some curvy ones too, because they are also shapes, aren't they? And so, um, and that is why I'm telling you, keep practicing drawing shapes, which, um, which is not common which is not always uh, what we have learned from the past. Okay, so uh, for instance, uh, you know, shapes like this, for instance, this is also shapes. Uh, this is also shapes, this is curvy lines, all right? And so, just keep doing it, just keep doing it. and. Uh, For instance, this is also shapes, okay? Uh, man, hang on, this, even this is, is a shape. Um, it could be a house, it could be an arrow, okay? Try to, try to harmonize the shapes, like for instance, you draw this one, you harmonize it and close the gap like, like this. All right, try to also harmonize them so that they all fit in like a puzzle. Are we all right? Any answers, if you can, or are you busy drawing? Okay, fill up the entire page. Don't leave anything blank. Okay, okay. So this is what I got, okay? And I wish I could see yours, but if you can, take a picture, take a picture and send it to me, yeah? Okay, so, so that is social distancing. Okay, so, um, so what we'll do is, we will now go to the next one, which is, Social undistancing, all right? Now, social undistancing is when you draw the shapes, the same shapes, but you are connecting the shapes to another shape. So now they are touching, okay? They're all touching. And you can actually form a picture if you like, okay? But what you do is you draw the shapes, the circles, the cloud, the whatever the shape is here, the lines, the triangles, the circles with another circle inside and little, little squares and curves and so on. But you put them all together 
and see whether you can form a picture. And so this is what I did from the previous class, but I got a little bit weird after a while, all right? And so this is putting the shapes together and making sure they all touch each other and connecting them and forming something out of it, all right? And so keep it simple. You don't have to be realistic. It's just shapes coming together. Are we all right? Okay, so here we go. Let's try this one out. <clears throat> okay. Shapes, huh? keep to the shapes. You can get a bit weird about the shapes if you like, but they are shapes nevertheless. Okay, so this is my... This is my first shape that I did. Okay. Now I don't know what's the other shape going to be, but let's see. Okay. There you go. Another shape drawn on it, and they're all connecting, they're all touching. Okay. Now I don't know what the other shape is going to be, but I'm going to draw it anyway. And this is the other shape, which I got. But I can almost see an, uh, an image emerging from the shapes. So I'm going to draw another shape now. Because I already sort of know what the image is going to be like. I don't know whether you can see what the shape is going to turn out to be. Okay. Maybe, can someone just look at the picture and see, uh, what do you think, what, what's your guess? What is your guess as to what this picture is going to turn out to be? If you can just answer me. Just, just put your answers. What do you think this is going to be? But you must see that all the shapes are touching each other. They're not social distancing anymore. Yeah, social undistancing. Anyone with an answer? What do you think this is going to be? Okay. All right. So, we're going to carry on. Okay. Right. Okay. Can you see? Right? More shapes. Right? Okay. So, more shapes. Just draw the fingers. The hand out. Okay, more shapes. But it all started from that star, which ended up to be a to be a hair and not a star. If you can call it hair, lah. All right, more shapes. There you go. Let's draw more shapes. So you know if you're end of the paper, so you have to make sure that it doesn't get too big so that you don't run out of space. Okay. More shapes over here, like this. And that is why the curvy curvy shapes which you drew earlier becomes important because you're not stuck with just triangles and squares and rectangles anymore, okay? Now, if you want to give more body to the images to make it more interesting, uh, you can, and I'll show you how. Okay, can you see the difference? Just that little line over there makes it look like as if it's a, a collar of sort, isn't it? Phantom said, 
says it looks like a human with hands like a french fries. <laughs> Parame says it's a flag of fruit. Nara said a uh, belt buckle. Nara said it's a hat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so I don't know how's yours uh, turning out, but if you want to put more interesting shapes and lines to this, you can, all right? And this is what, this is how you do it. Okay, and so you just got a button over there. Okay, and if you want to give some shadowy effect, to show that it is rounded here, it's rounded here, it's rounded here, and it's a bit rounded here as well, to show where the light is coming and where the shadow is, you can do this. Can you see that, this part of the hand? Okay. And so from a long line, and then it slowly becomes a little shorter, and then in the end. So you know the light is coming from the top, and that's the, that's the, the darker side of the, of the hand and sleeves. Okay, and you can do the same thing for the other hand as well. And so, can you see that? You can already see, that shape taking taking effect, right? Okay, and then you can do the same thing for the other part of the the body as well. There you go, the line, and you can you can darken the you can darken the shots if you like. Uh, so that there is different tones to the picture, the light and the dark. And it'll seem like as if the, the boy is wearing a dark colored pants. All right, so you can do this. All right, and for the shoes, you can give more lines to it and make it look more interesting, more body to it. So the more body you give, the better the picture will look. Okay, even the hair. You can give more lines to it and it will look good. <clears throat> okay. And uh, what you can do is, uh, if, you, if you want to give some meaning to the picture as to what the boy is looking at, uh, you can actually draw more shapes like this. Okay, draw a circle over there. And then draw another circle over here. Right, so you know the boy is, going, is, is looking at something interesting. You know what it is. Can someone tell me what this is going to turn out to be? If you can just answer me now, what do you think? See whether you're on the same page. <laughs> okay. Wow. Some of you have sent me your images, your scribbles. Wow, whoa, interesting, lovely. Okay, so here we go, okay. Any answers? Okay, let's see, let me take a look. A dog, snowman, cat, <laughs> chick, bowling pin, interesting. Kitten, cat. Okay, cool. So this is what I'm going to do. Do. So make sure the boy is looking down, and whatever creature you're going to draw is looking up at the boy. All right. So usually, to make it look up, it'll be the eyes and the nose, and you know, and so on. 
Okay. And here we go. All right. Okay, so now the picture is almost complete because now it makes a bit sense because the boy is looking down and he's looking happy and that's a chick or a bird or whatever you want it to be. Okay, and so this is what happens when you when you draw those shapes and you bring them together and then you make sense of it. Okay, and this is what we call social undistancing, right? Okay, now I'm gonna, now next one that I'm gonna do with you is, uh, again, uh, wait, hang on, we've got some pictures coming in. Let me just quickly take a look at it and give some comments. Um, wow. Wow, this is really nice, really nice. Uh, I, I don't know whether you can see this or not, all right. Can you see it? No, sorry, okay. And uh, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it later on and uh, I'll give some comments, but some of them are pretty good, okay. And so uh, I'm gonna teach you again how to get shapes, uh, actual shapes which we see on a daily basis. Uh, like bottles and boxes and so on, and how to get three, a 3D effect to it. Like for instance, okay, this is a beginning of the shape. Already you can see the 3D effect to it, isn't it? All right, and all right, can you see that? Okay, so when you draw the bottom line, the bottom line has to follow the top one. It has to curve out. So that if you draw a straight line, then it would not, it's not gonna make any sense. You have to curve the line, just like how this part is curved, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, and so, can you see it? Okay, so you have like a cylinder, correct? Okay, now, what you need to do is, if let's say this is your cylinder and the light is coming from here and then the shadow will fall on this side, okay? The shadow falls on this side, the darker side of the cylinder. So this is how you do it. And when you draw those lines at the side, those lines also has to sort of curve, all right? Those lines also has to sort of curve this way, all right? Not straight lines, but it has to curve a little bit. And if you want to make it look even more interesting, some of the lines at the bottom, you can lengthen it a little bit, just to give it that little, extra like this okay i'll draw one more line and curve it out like this can you see it so now you know exactly where the light is coming from and where the shadow is right and then to make it more interesting usually this entire object will cast a shadow on this side isn't it so let me get the shadow first And again, you need to curve the line a little bit. Curve it, long line, little longer, I mean, little shorter, shorter and short. So it has to like fade off slowly. Can you see it? All right? Okay, so this is when you draw a cylinder, okay? Like if I want to make it more interesting, I can. Let's put a label to it. Let's put a label to it. And so the label has to curve. It has to curve according to the shape of the cylinder, right? This one has to be straight, of course. This one needs to curve. And if you want to, I don't know, um, maybe it's a sardine tin, right? So what you do is you draw a little fish here to show that it is, you know, some canned food. I'm just thinking it's sardine. There you go. Okay. All right. And so that cylinder. Now, let's see if we can draw a ball. 
All right, ball is easy. Just draw a circle. Just draw a nice big circle. You got your ball here, right? And so, now if I want to make sure that, now right now it is not 3D, it is just 1D, right? If I want to make it look 3D, uh, you know, with shadows and all that, this is what I'm going to do. Right? Can you see that? How it how the lines are formed? It comes downwards. This part is short. This part is short. This part is longer lines. Why? Because it's rounded. And so when the light comes in and shines on the ball, this part gets more light than this part, isn't it? This part gets more light than this part. Of course, this one gets the most light, so you don't have to draw any lines here. But to show that it is a ball, this is how you need to do. Short lines over here, short lines over here, and long lines right down here. So the shadow of the ball will be cast over here, correct? And so I'm gonna draw more lines here to make it look like it is on the ground with shadow. There you go. Okay. And so, um, let's try a pyramid. Okay. Let's try a pyramid. Okay. First, you draw a triangle like so. Right? That's simple. Triangle is pretty simple. Okay, and what you need to do is to make it look 3D, make it look 3D, you have to draw a line coming from here, going upwards, and then it connects back to this part, all right? And so this is, let me draw first, okay, can you see, all right? So you know what's going to happen next, isn't it? This one will connect over here. Okay. And let's do that. There you go. Okay. And so, again, if the light is going to be shining on this surface of the pyramid, this part will not get any light whatsoever. I mean, it gets a little bit of light, but not as much. And so, and since this surface is a flat surface, it will not have lines like this, but it will have very consistent lines, just to show that this is the darker part of the pyramid. And so this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna draw the lines this way. Let me draw first, and then you can try. Like so, right? And so, if this part is getting the light, and this part is not getting the light, the lines are consistent and it shows the other side of the pyramid. I'm going to draw the shadow right over here. And of course, the shadow, let me draw first, will look something like this, right? And so you know it's the shadow of the pyramid right there. I hope you guys are trying it out. If you, if you can't take a picture and send it to me, let me take a look at it. <clears throat> okay. The next thing, a little bit more complex. Now we tried cylinder, we tried ball, we tried pyramid. Okay, let's go for something more, a little bit more complex. Okay. I'm going to draw this one. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Okay. This is the cap. Okay. And all right, this is what we have. Can you do this? A little bit more shape to it, a little bit more curve to it. Obviously, it's a it's a bottle or a or a or a vase. Okay, okay. Try doing that. So this shadow is going to be a little bit more tricky. Okay. So let's say the light uh, comes from here 
and the shadow falls right over here. And since this is bent, right, the lines has to be appropriately short and long. Okay. Okay, so this is what I did. Can you see? So because the bottleneck is smaller surface, so I drew short lines. And as it came here, this is a much bigger surface. And so longer lines, and as the surface gets smaller, the line also gets smaller. Can you see? All right. And so let's say if I want to put a label to it, I can. This is my label over there. And uh, I don't know what this is going to be. Uh, probably strawberry drink. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple of strawberries over here. Uh, and uh, this is strawberry juice. Okay, but there's one more thing that we are forgetting, which is the shadow, right? And so let's get the shadow of the bottle. Here we go. All right, and you can also uh, draw some shadows on the cap of the bottle to complete the picture. Okay, all right. Okay, now let's draw Let's draw one in one last interesting shape, okay, which is, uh, I'm going to draw this one. Okay. Do you know what this is? It's, a, it's either a papaya or a peanut, right? It's either a papaya or a peanut, okay? It doesn't matter. Okay, now, this is going to be a bit tricky because of course, the back part of the peanut is smaller, and then when it comes to the front part, it's a little bit bigger, right? Then it curves in. Now, let's say the light comes from here, and so the shadow, the darker side of the peanut will be right over here, okay? And then we'll get the shadow. Let's try this out, okay? There you go. Can you see the peanut? Now you know it's the lighter and the darker, right? Okay, now if you want to keep it a little bit more interesting, you can by doing lines like this. But it all has to be like a stroke, not, not, uh, not a, uh, a controlled line, but like a, it's like a stroke. It's like a flick of the line and it has to be flexible. So now we get the shadow that falls over here. Okay, and this is how you do it. Okay, so now you know the peanut is on the floor, on the table, and you know where the light is coming from and so on. So this is how you get simple shapes and shadows, especially if you're if you're if you're drawing caricature or poster pictures or whatever, you can draw, you can use such strong, uh, you can use such strong lines, thick lines and so on, okay? So keep practicing on that one. And um, still have about five minutes. Um, we can go to the next module, which is stay home, right? Uh, it's also good advice, by the way. Stay home and, uh, and and keep doing this. The stay home uh, thing is this. It's also shapes. It's also shapes, but you put the shapes together like this and create buildings, create houses, create apartments, flats, and whatever you like. And no, no one building is the same as the other. Okay, again, it gives you practice on shapes and curves and circles and putting them together 
and being creative about making sure one building doesn't look the same as the other one. So you also break barriers that way, okay? And so let's, shall we try this out? We have about four minutes. I did this in about three minutes, so you should be able to do it too, okay? All right, so let's try that out. Drawing the shapes out and forming houses, apartments, buildings, skyscrapers, whatever you like, okay? So here we go. Start with the simplest one first and then you flow from there. Okay, you don't really have to come up with very complicated ones. Try some simple ones first. You can draw spots. You can draw little dots as windows like this. Can you see it? All right, so simple lines. Okay, the next one is going to be a dome. like so okay and so I'm going to put some larger windows for this one and I'm going to put a nice door for it like so okay and I'm going to put a little tower like thing for the dome like so and then you just carry on to the next building and it again as i told you it doesn't have to be your common building looking thing like you know how we normally draw building i think tomorrow's class i'll tell you how to draw houses because we are so used to drawing houses the way we were thought the way we drew them uh, when you were in tarika isn't it Remember that house where you have your little roof and your door, which is much smaller than your window, and you have a, a little lane that comes out from your house door, and then you have your sun. That's your regular drawing. And this is the next building. Okay, and then let's carry on. Let's get a completely wacky looking one. Okay, which we don't normally see, but people look at it, they know it's a building. Right. Like this, for instance. Okay, you may ask, why is this not connecting? Okay, I'll connect it for you. There you go. So even the connection doesn't have to be a normal connection. It can be a curve. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to fill up one more space here and then we are done. So you can actually put some clouds there, give it some perspective. And uh, there's one more space here. I'm so tempted to draw one more here, but all right, let's do that very quickly. Okay, I got that one filled up. Okay, and so, uh, so that's the, this is a bit more crowded. Yeah, and what this, what does, what does this do for you? Because it now, what happens is, you know how to draw them, to draw those shapes with smooth lines. And you can know, you know also how to put them all together and form images and pictures. And it's always nice to use uh, a marker pen like this on a piece of paper like that, and uh, because it's that much more clearer, and um, it's fun. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we will go into some figure drawing. Uh, that will be the new module, uh, which I'm working on. And so I hope you had a good time. If you're going to leave any comments, uh, it'll be great for me to improve fantastic excellent i hope hope you guys had, had fun hope you all learned something about shapes and shadows social distancing and unsocial distancing and scribble and unscribble and uh, so tomorrow we'll see you again for, for some figure drawing and uh, so take care stay safe and um, and just be right bye guys mm -hmm.